With each Eurobangs, I always strive to go bigger and better than the previous years. It's grown and evolved into so much more than just a fishing trip. It's the ultimate adventure turning my dreams into reality. At the heart of the plan, there is always a special destination, somewhere that truly fires my imagination, and this year's trip was no different. It was for sure our most ambitious yet, by a long way, with more venues, more countries, more miles, and hopefully more carp. This is Eurobanks 5. This guy, man. How you doing, bro? How are you? <laughs> good, man. Oh, good? Yeah, good. Sure. This is what we need, all. We ain't running out of juice. When we get out yeah. to the right, you will see a bridge. We should step on the bridge first. Do you think I look like a carp fisherman? Am I like pulling off the I'm going shopping look or? <laughs> There's quite a few people there, Mark. A crowd has already drawn. <laughs> what does that say? Don't feed the birds. Don't feed the birds? Yeah. I have no intention, oh my lord. I have no intention of <laughs> feeding any birds. So let me set this rod up over here. Shaking, <laughs> like shaking. There's in and out, and then there's this. This is like in and maybe never coming back out again. I lowered my bread bomb in front of the largest carp in the group, and it took it without hesitation. Big ups Germany, big ups Mark Boosen. What a mega pit stop. Literally just rocked up, first cast of a bread bomb. Slurped in straight away. Big size two float claw, or big size two claw hooks. Big ups. This is the start of things to come. Let's hit the road. Let's get out of here. There's the legend. <laughs> There's the hook up. I didn't fish, just to say, I did not fish. You didn't fish, did you? I didn't fish. Big long trip this time, like we said earlier, many, many days, and we're actually going to meet back up with Mark towards the back end of the trip and do some slightly more sensible fishing in Germany. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> see you later, man. 622? I thought you said it was a big one, is man. That all right, is it? It's only 600 miles. Do you think you can manage it on your own? We eat 600 miles for breakfast, bro. <laughs> oh, that means there's a lot of rigs being tied. <laughs> Just arrived in the Czech Republic. Been here before, haven't we? What was that? Okay, Eurobanks yes, 2? Eurobanks 2, yeah. Beautiful country. Quick pit stop. Saw out our Czech vignette. 
which allows us to drive on the motorways in the Czech Republic without incurring a big fine. Which we did actually want to get. Um, 300 euro coming out of bled for not having a valid vineyard. 20 minutes late, weren't we? Yeah. 20 minutes late. Did a lot of arguing that night. They said, let us go. They did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the repercussions were going to be a lot worse than 300 euros. Yeah, he had a big gun, mate. He didn't he did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. A <laughs> <Hey>, OK. <laughs> After a little unplanned detour through the forest, thanks to the sat-nav, we met up with Nash Czech sales manager Mira and consultant Jacob. That's the boy. <laughs> hey Mira, we're on a real road. Hello, guys. How you doing, man? <laughs> very we made good. it. Hello, Hello bruv. Hello. How, How are, are you? Good. <laughs> yeah, very good. Wicked. Very nice weather. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let's okay. go, man. Okay, Follow yeah. you. Let's go. Okay, man. Well. The best thing that's come out of the last hour, we ain't got any more bugs on the windscreen. Yeah, the windscreen's clean. The bad news is, we've arrived, it's midnight, and we've got to set up. It's in rain. We've got a problem okay. with the rain. Okay. Because, uh, <laughs> the... I think you want to have a moan about it. Oh, yeah. You can have it, you've got 10 seconds to. There are two fields the and now they are really wet so there is a risk that we will stay there and we couldn't go uh, back in the morning so we should let the car somewhere here very far from the bank. <laughs> <laughs> that is just what I wanted to hear. <laughs> it sounds perfect to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now what are we talking? One kilometer, two kilometers? Oh. One kilometer? Okay. <laughs> Maybe less. 900 meters. <laughs> um, okay. 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 Big sigh. Happy. Eurobanks. <laughs> Eurobanks, 950 miles. <laughs> 950 what's, miles. What's walking a kilometer in the grand scheme of things? It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. I don't know why I'm complaining. <laughs> so we've come to another spot now. A little bit better hard standing here. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually really good. <laughs> really, really nice. Um, there's a big sort of, well, there's an island, and behind the island, quite a large area, maybe an acre and a half, two acres of shallow water, um, maybe up to about a metre. We've seen some big catfish hunting in there already, hitting the fry. Everywhere else. And then you've got the main flow and yeah, I'm going out on the island, even though it's not maybe the greatest idea with the river rising because of all this rain, you know, it definitely looks like the place to be in that main flow in that deep water. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it, I am buzzing, even though it's so late, I'm buzzing to get a rod out. Um, I'm going to wake up to a very beautiful morning, no doubt, in, you know, in the Czech Republic and fingers crossed, catch a fish tonight in the process. Morning, Noel. Morning, mate. How are you? Tired. Tired. <laughs> yeah, we've um, done our first night in the Czech Republic, if you can call it a night. Um, Ollie's head torch was definitely on at sort of half, three, quarter, four in the morning. I was still up and about then as well. So yeah, very small window of opportunity for fishing so far, and I've caught a few chub, but no carp. The stretch and the spot look out of this world. It's truly fantastic. There's lots to go out. There's some deep areas, fast, shallow, slow and I can't wait to get back here later on this evening. We're gonna go off now, we're gonna head over the border into Slovakia with Mira and Jakob. As I say, gonna get off today, gonna go and do some real active fishing, staying on our toes, stalking, hunting, see if we can catch our first ever Slovakian carp, but I can't wait to get back here this evening to put the proper big boy rods out, see if we can get a proper big Czech river carp. We seriously needed food, so we stopped off on the way for supplies.
Nice big shop. Yep, done a good shop for us all. I told the boys you'd come out with two big bags. <laughs> but there's an awful lot of bread there. Yeah. Uh, got some sweet corn, got some good lunch and meat. Yeah. Got some batteries for head nice, torches. Nice, nice. Uh, got some really good fresh ham, some cheese, some fresh bread, a little bit of butter, what and I one think? large chocolate bar. Yeah, boy. Sweet. Very nice people. Do you like a chocolate brownie? No. Homemade with nuts. Does Jack will just give you these. Yeah, because mum made them. Mmm. I've met Jacob's mum before and father. Very, very lovely family. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> Hang. Welcome in Slovakia. Thank you. We headed to a lake described as the Slovakian rainbow, and it was certainly raining. Never been to Slovakia. Ollie's been here once before on a stag do. Probably can't remember anything about the country. Not a lot, mate. And it'd be amazing today if we could nick a quick in and out bite. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Prime a couple of areas. Yeah, it's quite busy. There's a lot of locals. I think uh, there's no, no one seems to be working today. <laughs> <laughs> Slovakian Bank Holiday Tuesday. Yeah. Even though the lake is, as Ollie said, very, very busy, it's pretty safe to say no one's going to come fishing here. People tend to ignore spots like this, you know, little corner spots, um, opting to always have, you know, big expanses of open water in front of them. But more often than not, when you're after a quick bite, priming a little area like this, well out of the way from everyone else, sometimes do your bite nice and quickly. Feeling quite happy. I'm not sure I'll be saying that after two hours if I haven't caught anything, but. <laughs> well, there's definitely something about. Even thousands of miles from home. I'll leave the wife at home. <laughs> <laughs> no sign at all in the sauna. The reach in the parts so that other rods can't reach. Chucking it over. It's not right. even a pound. <laughs> it's 15 ounces. <sighs> the lens is covered in water. But that about sums it up really, doesn't it? How long? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. We baited this particular area here. Scope it squid flake, scope it squid pellet, some sweet corn. And I've just literally put the rod in. Ollie was just placing one of his rods and it's gone. It is just over a pound. <laughs> But it's my first ever Slovakian Cup. When we got back here, Ollie and I came and stood here for about 10 minutes. Good sets of fizzes coming up. And I've got a little one in there. All right, let me clean the water off the lens. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're back with the water cleaned off the lens. It's a little one, but look. Actually, look how beautiful it is. Very angry, probably not been caught before. A little baby in a quiet corner. Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> Sick. Very good, mate. It's okay, my well, pleasure. It's a vacuum car, man. Really happy. He's pleasure. only... It's more common, but... Okay. So I think uh, Ollie can catch one next, and we can really sort ourselves out. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, <Good> boys. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and those wellies full of water. Soaking wet, mate. I'm literally up to here, all my joggers. Going to try and build up a match winning weight.
Yeah. <laughs> we haven't been here long, and uh, both Folly and I have managed to catch our first carp from Slovakia, which has made us both very happy, even though the weather conditions have been far from beautiful. Dead, dead simple. Uh, little armor link hook link with a size eight twister long shank, and then just two pieces of real corn on a hair very tight to the shank. Nice, mate. Well done. Buzzes. <laughs> I am genuinely, they're tiny I know, but great feeling to catch a fish from a new country. And they're minters, you know, lovely little carp. And they give me the run around, decent bites, good takes, good little battles on the two pound sawn off. Just generally a lot of fun. Pasty bashing banks. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't talk because I got some as well. <laughs> And here's my rainy day brace of a carp and a not carp. A multi-species hunt for me. Carp and kerosene. That'll do. Have you had a lovely time today, Al? A lovely time, mate. I'm never <laughs> going to let a bit of rain stop me, am I? No, of course not. <laughs> no of course time. not. We're soaking wet, but we're happy. Aren't we? Come on, smile boys. <laughs> <laughs> Eating pom bears in the rain. What is this thing? Well, the rain has finally stopped. It's going to be a lovely evening. It is going to be a really nice evening. You all dry now? I'm all dry. I'm still soaked, I need to do the same thing. Change your socks, change your tracksuit bottoms. Change your trainers. <laughs> right, let's go fish the river. Yeah, man, let's get back there. Well, oh, I thought you were completely dry, but you seem to have one wet bit. Finding that rather funny, aren't you, Ollie? A little bit childish, wouldn't you say? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's having a giggle. Oh, Alan's wet himself. <laughs> Had a little accident, caught a carp, got really excited and it trickled down with you. Uh, lovely time. <laughs> sick little spot, but proper sick. <laughs> well, we're on the island, ready to get fishing. Safe and sound. Big carp river tactics. Big hook, size two, big track for lead, eight ounces. Strong and reliable, that's your order of the day. There's some savage snags out there. They're definitely gonna pull back if we're lucky enough to get a bite. So I'm fishing a snag leader straight onto my bullet mono, but yeah, 40 pound snag leader. Uh, lead clip that will discharge the lead on the take. And then a the big long 35 pound armor link hook link and 24 mil cultured hook bait. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do on both the rods. There's been some bait in this stretch of river all day. Tonight, I'm just gonna put about 20 freebies around my hook bait and try and get a bit of a faster bite. Lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> In the early hours, I had a steady take on the longest range rod, finding myself doing battle with a true river monster, a carp of over 30 pounds. What an awesome night. 
great social with the lads sitting around the fire. Five chub and this incredible carp. I'm oh, so happy to have Ollie with me to land this incredible Czech River beast. Check him out. Check him <laughs> out. Such a sick night with the boys. Topped off by this. Almost like nothing I've ever experienced before. Big long first run, already fishing a long way out, maybe 50 meters. And it just seemed to take forever to get him back to me. This is amazing watching this in a way, but the best bit was the fight. It was like mad, mad, mad fight. I wasn't the only one to have bagged River Beast. And there's mirrors up in the distance. Let's go and have a look at this banging carp. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay, so last night amazing run, amazing fight and on the end this nice river mirror. Mirror for mirror. Yeah, mirror <laughs> for mirror. Lovely cart mate. Yeah, amazing. Good job. Well mirror. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, Holly's just had a barbel and we're just getting packed up and then another one of my rods has gone and again give it to Al this time it was a carp but he'd done him in the snags it'd be an awesome for him to get one and the boys, much further up the bank from us, Mira and Jakob, Mira's just hooked the second one. Whoop, woo! I still didn't see him. Big fish? I don't know. Strong one. Strong fish. Yes! <laughs> I know this guy. You know him? Yeah. You've caught him before? Yeah. I, I caught it two days ago. No yeah. way! Yeah. And I three days ago. <laughs> no him. way! Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. caught it two days ago and you caught yeah. it three days yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Still the same way. Wow, this fish is hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> He's a boily eater, a scope <laughs> yeah. Did you have it on scope X squid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you have it on scope X squid? Yeah, I think so. So three <laughs> times in four days. <laughs> oh, mate, that's incredible. Okay, so this fish has a story because I know this fish for one year already. I have caught her at October or something like this. My friend caught it at June at first time. It was first time when I saw this fish. And now I'm here from Friday. Then I caught him in Friday morning. And Jacob, he joined me at Saturday and he caught it, him again. He caught him on now, Saturday? Yeah. And what day are we today? <laughs> Today is Tuesday. And you caught him again. The Nash bait yeah. lover. <laughs> Probably the biggest Nash bait fan. <laughs> okay, now let's have him back. Yeah. Flip him around and <laughs> Go on. See you. <laughs> Second, Ollie. You've not had a little accident, have you? Well, I don't remember having an accident, but it was just quite exciting. <laughs> Leaky waders, look. I've had a big bum accident. Oh, no. I've <laughs> been wet for two days, don't make no difference, does <laughs> no. it? Come on, let's go. Right, we're a bit late. We're really late, yeah, supposed to leave at eight. It's now two. Uh, we're hitting the road now. We're going to leave the Czech Republic 
farewell to the lads and cross the Slovakian border and into Hungary. We're going to meet up with my good pal Zoltan and his wife and we're going to chuck the rods out for a very quick overnighter. Let's do it. Later, boys. Later, lads. Bye bye. Big up. See you later. Now that's on stall. One of the biggest lakes in Europe for a 12 hour overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Is it time roll. to go home yet? No, mate. We got, nope. We got a car to catch. <laughs> There he is, the legend that is Zoltan. Thanks, mate. I love this guy. <laughs> are we fishing out of his garden? Of course we are. Oh, are we doing garden of course fishing? We are, are we? Oh, high five for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zoltan is our guy over here in Hungary. I've had some seriously good nights of him very recently, in fact. Bye, man! Hi! <laughs> Hi. Have you a good trip? Yeah, man, tired, but yeah, good. Yeah, I see. Good. Would you like a coffee? I would love to take a coffee with you. Okay. Really, really love to. Hey, man, how are you doing? Thanks. <laughs> good to see yeah. you. Yeah, that'll do. The first Lovely. fish. Nice. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You ready to Balaton? Balaton! Yeah, let's go! <laughs> Show me. <laughs> Here's a bicycle. It is a very important thing. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have very long distance to the Balaton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not jerk. Wow, this is Balaton water. Yeah. <laughs> I touched it. <laughs> Just follow me. <laughs> At 48 miles long and 8 miles wide, Lake Balaton can actually be seen from space. And we had just 12 hours to catch a carp from there. The next generation of Balaton carp hiding in the reed beds. It's a man deep in fort right there. I wonder what he's thinking about. Could it be as he got all the batteries charged? Could it be what flavour pizza he's having tonight? Or could it be how he's going to attack these Balaton car? What do you think, Al? I want to fly my drone down this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the Balaton Barrow for the day. It's going to take a precarious run up the, the runway. Zoltan was actually at Balaton on his annual holiday with his wife, and he kindly invited us to fish with them. He donated his rod to Ollie for the night while I went about preparing three of my own. Big hook, big bait, big lake, big cup. <laughs> Fishing at Balaton requires the use of a boat and we were using it to drop our rig some 250 metres out. Rigs and tackle were kept strong and simple and we baited with a couple of handfuls of Scopex squid around our cultured hook baits. Feeling very happy right now. Both Ollie and I managed to catch fish from Balaton last night. 
yeah, what an amazing experience. Had the loveliest of times with Zoltan and his wife. And this is our reward. What a car, man. <laughs> come in, Zoltan. Please come Thank in for you. the picture. Big smiles. Okay, lovely. But I think that was testament just to how incredible Lake Balaton is. Just released two fish and another rod ripped off. This one, big 24 mil scope squid culture look bait with a white scope squid pop up on the top. And me and Zoltan, we only played, replaced this rod probably an hour and a half, two hours ago. What a mega carp and a great way to end on very short time in Hungary. In what seemed like the blink of an eye, our 12 hour session was over and it was time to move on. Well, they very, very kindly gave me a bottle of this yesterday. And for those that don't know, this is a traditional Hungarian drink that's brewed in people's sheds and gardens. It's, I don't think it's illegal as such, but it's certainly not the sort of thing you buy in, in Tesco's. Um, this one's a great version made by an elderly gentleman and I desperately didn't want to open it. You know, the experiences I've had with Zoltan in the past have been momentous and memorable to say the least but i think to toast what a great evening we've had here i'm gonna have a quick glass of this for the guys and then we're gonna hit the road um interestingly or strangely enough all this way to the other side of europe guess who's down the road steve briggs and joan so it only seems right and proper they're about 10 kilometers away we're going to call in quickly give joan a big hug and, and wish steve the best of luck with the rest of his trip head up to budapest go and see some sultan's boys that work in, a, in his fishing tackle shop and then we're going to cross the border to a different country let's have a quick glass of this and get on the road a big Alan. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to open it. Because we know how dangerous it is, Zoltan. Yeah, he's a shot. He's the muddy tent peg worker now. Well, this is very feral, but I have done this a few times before. <laughs> 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 tent ah! peg! The embarrassment! Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're done, no. <laughs> Very small one. Yeah. You're driving, yeah? I'm driving <laughs> Just again. double check in. <laughs> Somebody's got to drive. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank you. Mm. <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> I'll yeah. see you soon. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. See you later, guys. See you. Bye. Enjoy your holiday. Bye bye. 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 Uh, this is where Steve and Joan are chilling. This is a tiller up front, runs catch carp hungry. This is one of the waters on their books. There he is, the legend himself. <laughs> the legend. <laughs> the legend, the man. Hey, <laughs> Brindy. Hey, Brindy. How you doing, mate? Oh, it seems Fancy so seeing strong. you here. Well, it's my world, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Are you having a nice time, Joe? Oh, oh lovely. Yeah. Oh, it's it's like really, good. really good. nice. <sighs> When Joan says, would you like a bit of cake? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joan, I would love a bit of cake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be greedy, I'm gonna have two. What colour? I'm gonna have a pink one. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> and a yellow one. Because they're my two favourite colour pop-ups. Cheers, mate, good to see ya. Thank you, mate, legend. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah. See you later. And see you Take back care. in England right. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See ya. <laughs> Oh dear, oh, I didn't account for this hole. It's a ferry out. It looks like a ferry terminal to me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> don't get lost, don't get lost, don't get lost. Thank you Thank very you. much. I would love to go to the toilet quickly though. Yeah, I think we've got time. Do you think? <laughs> 
The last thing I want to see is you chugging across that way and me stuck here. Whatever happens, I'm taking phones and a wallet with me. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. I'm going to fashion a safety device for when we get on the ferry. You need to, bruv. Cling on leader. I've got a better one. Strap me in. Each other, that's it. This makes me happy. I that feel safe, happy. I feel secure, I feel like nothing could possibly go wrong. What could go wrong? Nothing. nothing. Let's get to the other side of Balaton. <laughs> <laughs> About to cross the mighty Balaton on a boat, and it is mighty. Look at that, man. Look at that. Do you know how filthy the camera lens is? Is it bad? Have a look at the fingerprint on it. Ooh. <laughs> it's a good one. Ooh. I reckon you can ID you off that, mate. <laughs> Fingerprint analysis. <laughs> Imagine if he pops off doing a wheelie. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> and takes off from the lights at a rate of knots. On his flip flops. <laughs> Somewhere. Nash door. Nash door. Salt hand shop, quickly home. call in to see the boys. Home from home. Yo, yo, yo! Yes, boys. You alright? How you doing, man? All right, good to see you. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Scott, I've got the t shirt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Can we bring for you. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolute thank pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Big thank ups, you. man. Thank no you. Problem. This place. This is pretty cool. Hi. Can I have a bacon double cheese meal? And can I have a double Whopper meal? Okay. Uh, that's it finished, please. Okay. Let's go to Serbia. <laughs> Our next destination was the Serbian capital, Belgrade, where we were going to meet the creator of the dot spot who was there fishing a cart match. Well, we've just made it across the Serbian border and uh, one of the advantages about having a big van full of smelly fishing tackle is that the customs guys really don't want to have a look and we really didn't want to unload it all. We just want to get to uh, our meeting with Dot Squad Man, so. The, the saviour of wet nets and smelly mats has allowed us to get straight on the road. Very, very late, but as Ollie says, we're going to go and meet the boys that have met the Dot Squad. They're fishing a big competition and uh, yeah, we shall see what we're going to do tonight. Just met up with Zaliko and he's now going to take us to the National Carp Fishing Championships where we're going to meet Bojan and his fellow angler. Yeah, bit of a weird one, eh, yo? 
and of course, uh, I mean, we're running late, aren't we? we ain't, we're not going to get to Montenegro, are we? Realistically, we need somewhere to sleep at night. How many bikes catch a Serbian car? We need a pit stop car. <laughs> <laughs> We met up with Boyan and the lads managed to arrange a carp hotel for the remainder of the night. It's just a surreal moment, like really surreal. I think a lot of it is sleep deprivation, but yeah, I did not expect to be standing here now at midnight in Belgrade, in Serbia, next to some sort of Alice in Wonderland restaurant with a lake next to it. This chick here next to a pumpkin, I think that's like Cinderella. Then you've got a few people around there from the Wizard of Oz. And this is all in amongst the restaurant. Directly behind us, we've got the lake. Yeah, super mad. Anyway, as you say, we ain't got long. I'm gonna get Let's some go. gear out. Let's go fishing. Even at one o'clock in the morning, on your local park lake in the pitch dark. If you're quiet enough, put their bread in. They're always out there to be caught. What a fish to catch as my first carp from Serbia. Bread bomb business. And to think that the lads earlier told us that this particular park lake was the first, you know, lake in the whole of Serbia to enforce a catch and release, or 22 years ago? Yeah. Something like that. Amazing. What a carp. Big ups. Well, that was an unexpected bonus. That is a fascinating fish. Really weird one, isn't it? Yeah. He's got a few stories to tell. Anyway, pit stop card done. Let's uh, in and out. In and out. We had a full day on the road travelling to Montenegro, which included another border crossing. Everything had gone well up until now. What's happening, bro? Stressed. <laughs> We've come this far and they won't let us over the border. Categorically, will not let us over the border. Um, I've got an insurance document, but it doesn't stipulate the vehicle registration. We've got our passports, obviously. We've got driving licenses, but they want a document with this vehicle registration on it. I haven't got it. I haven't got it. Run the insurance company. Oh no, we just send you out a blanket one for the company. So you, you know, all vans can use this. And we've and we've asked them specifically yeah. for the last well, two days to, to that, sort us out. It's not helping me right now. So I don't know what we're going to do. Meanwhile, no Eurobank's adventure would be complete without a guest appearance from Bastille. And with Nick unable to join us this time, he had another good friend, Flo, as his wingman. Welcome to Montenegro. Bastel and Flo arrived in Montenegro two days ahead of us. Good morning. And so we're dealing with the red tape involved with fishing there and the logistics of actually getting out onto the water and finding somewhere accessible to set up on the steep rocky shoreline of Lake Skadar. Thank you very much. See you. See you. Yeah. Eventually they set about fishing. Hopefully by the time we arrived, the lads would have caught some carp. We've made it. <laughs> little stressful moment that was. You don't see me getting stressed out when I cast into a tree on an island or even suffer a hook pull. You know, I deal with those sorts of things pretty well. Work, don't get stressed, don't get stressed with my kids, don't get stressed with my amazing missus. But them lot, oh, I didn't think we were coming through, man, but a little 50 euro bribe and a lot of smiling, bit of charm. We're into Montenegro. And yes. we're going fishing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of our Eurobanks adventures revolve around one dream destination, somewhere special that really gets me buzzing, and this time it was the incredible Lake Skadar. Set in a national park in the beautiful country of Montenegro, Skadar is the largest lake in the Balkans, with a surface area of more than 390 square kilometers. It's famous for incredible wildlife and biodiversity, but I'd also heard whispers about the wild carp that lived there, some of them giants. Information was pretty hard to come by, as recreational fishing for carp is pretty much non-existent in Montenegro, but that just made it even more mysterious and alluring. With just the odd photo, the only way to find out was to go and try and catch one myself. This is the country I really wanted to come to, Montenegro. Yeah, we've made it. We're a bit late, what, 14 hours late or something? Yeah. Still got 100 miles to go. 
through this, which is going to take us another three hours. It's pretty severe terrain. It's savage. I was uh, not enjoying my driving very much, trying to tie My uh, so, yeah. rig tray is just going everywhere, like, I keep losing baiting needles. And... No, it's good. We're going to go see Bastard and Flow. They seem to be struggling a little bit, but it is a very, very big lake. Into pieces on the floor. Don't you, yeah, man. Don't dream your life. Live your dream. Checking for crumbs. <laughs> we eventually arrived in the town of Vibesar on the banks of Skadar, where we would be based, and met up with some of the locals who would help us to understand the lake a little bit better and hopefully find a few carp. Here we are. Over a cold beer, we found out a bit more about this amazing lake and its inhabitants and arranged to go out by boat the following morning. It was explained to us that the carp in the lake, in spite of being protected, were the target of relentless poaching by commercial fishermen who sold them for food. With such a massive expanse of water and just four guards to police it, the poachers had little fear. Once widespread, the population of these wild carp was dwindling and with just three days at our disposal, it was gonna be a tough task using rod and line. But I knew that if we could just find the carp, then we could catch them. As evening approached, Ollie and I went exploring and headed to higher ground to watch the sun go down and take in the incredible scenery. It's pretty cool. Guys, horrible places, don't we? Uh, we're just trekking up to the top of one of the small mountains in the surrounding area. There's an old castle ruins. Check that out and get a nice view of the sort of surrounding area. This takes your breath away. In amongst the tourists, we met a really interesting lady called Nicola, and we were kept entertained with her stories of her amazing exploits while we watched the most epic of sunsets. We came down, so we set up the Amazon Micro Renewal Project. And so for eight years, we've been working on that. So I started a little project to build rainwater systems. And that's what I do every year or every other year. So whoever is kind of like the poorest with disabilities, we go down and we, yeah, build these systems for them. And then the last plate I'm spinning is that um, a group from London called Rainforest Saver contacted me. So they said, look, we want to come to the Amazon. Will you help us? So I was like, yeah, I know, you know, I know people down there. I can kind of organize it. And so last year we put in the first 4,000 trees. I went out on a boat today. That was cool. Yeah, we'll be going out tomorrow. Yeah. It's beautiful to see the lake. If I could do anything... Yeah, dot, that dot, one, dot, the one dot. big thing. God, what would it be now? I don't know. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's too f***ing big. <laughs> Not enough paper. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite an interesting... Uh, that was a... F Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable 60 minutes, maybe a bit longer, on the top of the mountain with the lovely Nicola, who we've just become friends with. I don't really want to leave it. No, Ollie, so don't want to stop taking pictures. I can stand here and just stare. I'm not, I'm not even looking for showing fish. You know, just taking it all in. But yeah, this is a, a tiny percentage of the lake, and tomorrow we're going to get out there and have a really good explore vibe boat. That evening we had dinner with the locals, even trying the local delicacy. Yep, you've guessed it carp and while Ollie stayed on drinking with them I returned to the van to prepare the fishing gear for an early morning assault the following morning I left Ollie in bed nursing his hangover while I took to the water with one of the locals searching for some carp I spent several hours covering as much water as possible scanning every likely looking spot on this amazing lake So vast was the wilderness, I'd only explored a fraction of it. Out on the lake it became clear to me the true extent of the poaching of the carp on Skadar. With hundreds if not thousands of families around the lake relying on carp for both food and income, 
There were fishermen with long nets, spears, and the final straw being a phone call from a very distraught Bastille saying enough was enough. He just had poachers electrofish a cart from directly over his spot. It was looking likely that we may have bitten off more than we could chew this time and had a decision to make. Did we stay and try and catch the impossible or did we cut our losses and move on? Leaving Montenegro out. Yeah, mate, we're racing the sunset towards the border, towards Bosnia, um, along a road which is barely a road. <laughs> I think it gets a bit worse than this apparently according to the lads because they came across this border on the way. Oh, not oh, now. Here we go, yeah. The road ends. Crazy landscape, though. Yeah, so it was an in and out uh, visit to Montenegro. Unfortunately, not really a successful one, but it was an amazing place and I'm glad that you brought me here, mate. Not successful in the terms of fishing, well, we had a lovely time. In terms of other things, I think it was very successful. Well, yeah. Meeting new friends. Met a lot of new friends. Seeing new places, which is part and parcel of all of this. Yeah. You know, I don't know, I'm a sucker for carp fishing and catching them, but yeah, there are other elements I do love too. This is a joke. Yeah. So we drove through the night across another three borders, heading for Croatia. So we've made it to uh, back to the EU. Well, only, oh, yeah! <laughs> only temporarily mine for us uh, Brits, but there you go. And um, as it's Battle's birthday, we've stopped at, whoa, a nice services. <laughs> Happy birthday, Battle. And we're yeah. having a nice um, anti-pasty. Yeah. Three borders, didn't we, in the last couple of hours. We've got another four hours heading up through Croatia. Gonna meet up with Chris Curry, absolute legend, and chat the rods out in the river for the night. The boys weren't planning on coming with us, but because fishing didn't work out at Lake Skadar. <laughs> is that a nice polite way of putting it? Yeah. No one knows what it is. Fishing didn't quite work out at Lake Skadar, so they're gonna Ten come with us now and yeah, brilliant result. Get to spend another couple of days with the boys having a lovely time. Right, let's have some tea. <laughs> oh look who's driving! It's really late. <laughs> it's really late. We're listening to this. Keep us away. But luckily, we haven't got long to go. Oh, it's been a mission, hasn't it? It's been a long old day <laughs> again. <laughs> you know. Hello. Hello. Good Chris. morning. Nice. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's morning. <laughs> early morning. Uh, very early. <laughs> we have three fish. Three fish? Yeah, it's not big, such size, but, but wild river carp. So wow. uh, the thing is they uh, eat in morning. Yeah. You can sleep at night yeah. and expect now when well, after dawn something. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We arrived at the River Cooper just as dawn was breaking. Ollie and I set up at one spot while Chris took Bastard and Flo to another spot just upstream. Hey Mr Beaver, why are you beavering around? Chris, his son and his friend Dennis had fished the previous night and bagged three lovely wild river carp. Beautiful man. Look at me, yeah. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Oh, no. Yeah, good boy. Another really long day, but it's most certainly been spent in paradise. It's a big piece of water, really big piece of water. Um, I'd say this particular bit here, maybe 80, 90 yards across, maybe 100 yards across. There's an island down here to our right, and uh, it wasn't long before we started to see fish show. Daylight started to come through and it just kicked off. I can't remember the last time I've been on a river and seen carp activity like this. Yes, there was chub rolling, there was ass hitting, hitting the bleak and stuff. And even barbel 
crashing and stuff. But the car captivity was out of this world. They literally were lumping all over the place. They weren't consolidated to one area, upstream, downstream, on our near margin, the far margin, down the center. It was just such a sight. And I was itching to get the rods out. Got my rods prepared, as, as did Ollie. Uh, and the other boys, Bastel and Flo, they've gone round a bend. They're sort of directly opposite us on this bank, but, but round a bend. They also went off and, and got set up. Uh, the fish continue to show and show and show. Um, yeah, it's just a mad, mad location. Um, I can't really put into words how wild it is. Um, it's clearly not fished a lot, only by Chris and his friends and stuff. And it's a very, very harsh, savage environment. There's an unbelievable amount of snags out there. The particular margin we're fishing on, there's just sheets of, of rock, very, very severe angles on it, and even coal. You know, I've never seen that before. Coal in a river, pure black coal. I basically set up my hide down on a very, very steep site. The sleep system was in there. And um, if you've used a sleep system, you'll know when you sort of have them compacted for a while and you fold them out, um, they, the head end wants to tend to kick up a little bit and to rectify the problem, all you do is lay on it for five seconds, get up and that's it, it's dead, dead flat again. So I did this just to get the head section down and stuff. I didn't get up again. <laughs> I didn't move until uh, all hell broke loose and I woke up to Ollie having a take, which was probably about 11 o'clock. It. Oh, he tried it again. Yes. You can lose. Yes. Oh. Yes. This is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. At the end of a very, very long day. <laughs> very long day. What a start that. of a new one. <laughs> that is a really good way to start. <laughs> <sighs> yes, bro. Well, there's no better wake up call then a siren one tone in and that's exactly what's happened. I don't even know how long I've been asleep but I don't think it's long, the sun isn't up. But uh, yeah, Al and I and the boys as well drove through the night to come and meet Chris on the river and yeah, Chris has put us right on the money. It hasn't taken long to catch one and hopefully it won't be the last one either. But let's get this beautiful creature back. Yes, you also now. And then it carried on, you know, I had two bites myself. Disappointingly, I lost them both. Um, the first one, very, very quickly into the fight, uh, it took me into a big snag. I actually ended up getting the bait boat out. They kept crashing and crashing and crashing up uh, up my left margin. It just couldn't be ignored. Uh, originally, I was fishing directly out in front of me, but with all the fish crashing up there, I decided the only way to get up to those fish was to get the bait boat out and drive up to them. Uh, drop two rigs quite close to the snags I'd say probably 10-15 meters off but bearing in mind I'm in 10 meters of water the swing back probably brought them maybe even 20 or 25 meters away from the snag and I thought I'd be all right there but yeah the first one done me almost immediately it didn't feel like a big fish it was a very aggressive take like wee, taking uh, a serious amount of line on the first run the second one on the other hand it felt very similar to the, the, the Czech Republic fish just deep and slow and sort of plodding and very slowly taking line off the reel but this time it's kited onto my near margin and, and done me in another snag and, and that was it it was stalemate we were pulling and i actually felt the hook come out that short didding uh, as the hook come out and the hook must have gone into a piece of woodwork i kind of need to get it together now i can't lose another one i'm gonna have to get some sleep but i'll set my alarm get up at midnight redo them again and i'll probably reset my alarm again for four o'clock in the morning um, the main reason being there is stuff coming down the river. I don't want to build up of weed and debris on my line. The other reason is I want maximum effectiveness with the cultured hook baits. You get a good three to four hours leakage off them. So if I recast every sort of three to four hours, I'm giving uh, the fish the best possible chance of finding a very, very attractive hook bait out there. The following morning, the carp god smiled down and I landed my first Cooper carp. For sure he's not a monster, uh, in comparison to some of the fish that live in this really, really harsh environment. But to catch my first carp from the River Cooper, yeah, he's a truly, truly special one. 
Dennis, Chris, I cannot thank you enough. Great to see Bastel and Flo. They've had a really rough time. They've worked so, so hard after the last three or four days. Uh, hope to hook up the boys uh, again soon. But yeah, it's been a grueler. That's fishing for you. You've got to work at it. It's time for us to move on now. We're going to head into another country and see what Slovenia has to offer. Thank you, lads. It was great. <laughs> Big ups. Wow, get in there, oh. Yes. Yes! yes. <laughs> Thank you, man. What an awesome ending. We're all packed up pretty much, apart from the rod. Proper river carp. Machine. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Time to go home. Montenegro done. <laughs> Something left there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't win them all, Bethel. Nah. You do a pretty good job though most of the time. <laughs> Big love boys. Bye bye. Bye boys. <laughs> Just a little reminder that not that long ago this was a war zone. Quite a lot of buildings got bullet holes in, didn't they? It was ridiculous. I never ever would have imagined it. Here also, look. <laughs> that is deep, man. Me and I were just saying that, you know, the war was 20 years ago and I'm 34 and I was a little bit older. We won't discuss exactly how old. And, you know, I would have been 10, 14, 15 years old running around in the middle of this. And, that's just hard to comprehend. I was playing football with my pals on the park. You just know. to um, like point out, those are bullet holes in the wall. Like every building, pretty much, it hasn't been refaced. It's got bullet holes. That is. This was a war zone not that long ago. For his day job, Chris actually manages a large modern freshwater aquarium called Aquatica, which represents the huge number of fish species that reside in Croatian rivers and replicates some of the diverse habitats that can be found there. Before we left Croatia, it would have been rude not to have a little behind the scenes tour. We are now heading into the aquarium and we will see some nice fish. As a carp angler, you will be... <gasps> Secret message. Only for workers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, what will happen now? Look at the bream. The bream is eating. Enter. Look. Oh, man. Oh. You think he's really been waiting oh, for Of course, it. man. Yeah. Getting up, up close and personal. Massive car. Can't wait. <laughs> one more? Really? He kissed the camera. And again, yeah, more, one more. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Utterly epic, uh, what a great end to our very short stay in Croatia. This guy here is an absolute legend, not only is he basically pioneered the carp scene in Croatia, he's still at it now after 40 odd years and as passionate as ever and made his life his work and yeah, yeah loves what he does, extremely yeah. passionate and yeah. I feel incredibly blessed to um, have spent 36 hours in his company and I can't wait to come back again Chris. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Sick. Sick. With our tour complete, Chris insisted we also join him for dinner that his wife had prepared before we left, which was delicious. That's what's left after we finished eating. Amazing. <laughs> Let's hit the road. Hit the road, Jack. See you, mate. Thank you so much. No Big problems. ups. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you for coming oh, and watch your you. head. Loved it. Yeah.
speak to you soon, mate. I'll drop you an email. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Yes. See you later, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Well, we've made it to Slovenia. We weren't really intending on stopping in Slovenia, but we've had a sort of little change of plan, haven't we? Uh, we're going to go and see Jamie Klosik and our good friend Gaspar. We explained to him we've also got a very limited time, i.e. a quick overnight. I said to try and keep the water to a sensible sort of size so we could try and find them. Where are we going? 600 acres. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little one though, mate. 600 acres is tiny. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a case of arriving, hopefully listening and looking out for some crashing fish and um, flicking the rods out in 600 acres for the night. Having a social with the chaps. Yeah. It was another late arrival, followed by a night of very little sleep. Landed. Well, it was another after dark arrival in Slovenia. Well, we're in like a 600 acre runs water. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just bizarre. Thing. Like, yeah, there is. I've not been to sleep yet. It's what, six o'clock in the morning, and I can't keep two rods in the water. Pretty good little evening. That was number one. Got another two to show you. Ollie might have had a busy night, but a move and a change of tactics was going to be required if I wanted to get amongst the action. I got my location and tactics sorted and the bite started to come thick and fast. That was a nice take. Ripper. Yeah, I've not long moved down here. A uh, very quiet night for me. Um, I was up with the boys watching Gasper catch fish after fish, and then Ollie got his rods out, and it was relentless. Relentless. Poor bloke, man. Like, trying to keep one rod in the water was hard enough. Uh, Jamie started catching in the early hours of this morning when the other boys went to sleep, and it's been very, very quiet for me, but I made two pretty significant changes. One was moved, uh, come down here onto a lot more fish, and two, took the pop ups off. That'll do. Oh, another nice mirror. All in the mirrors. Incredible place. It was really cool meeting out with Gasper and Jamie last night. Even though between all of us, we've probably had seven or eight hours sleep all together. Yeah, it's an absolute testament just to how amazing the fishing in Slovenia is. I know Gasper's caught a few better ones, including one really, really nice mirror. Mega place. Lovely carp. Try and hold him a little longer. He's very nice there. Long one. Very angry. After switching from the pop-ups to the culture look baits this morning, I've had nothing but success. The only other big change I've made, I've come off the lead clip and gone onto a helicopter setup. This means I'm not discharging the lead on the take. There's no snags, there's no weed, so this is absolutely perfect. Easy, clip your lead on via a link clip, still fishing with a Klingon leader, and then I've got this helicopter bead sleeve, which I can attach my hook link to. I'm gonna get it back out, because I'm sure there's another bite to be had.
<laughs> Very fast bite. Really enjoyed this. Well, the lads have actually packed up all their gear. I've still got a couple of rods out. We're probably going to stay about another half hour, an hour. But yeah, the lads got to go and pick up some people from the airport. They've got a family turning up and some other customers for their VRP carp tours. I can't believe this particular water here isn't even on their books. You know, they take them to, I hate to say it, but even better lakes than this with bigger fish in it and even more beautiful surroundings. Yeah, I love Slovenia. We came here for bled. We've came back again. It's such a short session and there's always some incredible carp to be caught in possibly one of the most beautiful countries in Europe. miles, 2 hours 16. Overnight in Slovenia done, we had a relatively short hop over the border to Austria. We're in Austria. Um, last border for a little while. I don't think we have to go through anymore, do we? And we're going to meet Mario. Uh, Mario is a bailiff on the, uh, the fantastic fishery Stefan. Uh, we met him a couple of years back when we went out there and filmed. Well, we've got a couple of days in Austria which is, uh, by our standards, quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we've we got that. probably just short of 48 hours, yeah. 36, 48 hours. We had our overnighter in Slovenia, that was pretty good. Epic. Yeah, not much sleep, that was a proper carp hotel. <laughs> <laughs> good fun with the lads, and uh, yeah, looking forward to a couple of days kicking back on the big carp trail. We met up with Mario in Corinthia in southern Austria, where we were going to fish a large natural lake with the chance of catching a really big fish. First stop was to check into the B&B that gave us access to the lake. This is very good. We are not old, we are recycled teenagers. That is brilliant. This was followed by a quick trip to the local castle to pick up our fishing permits. Have a lovely day. Day. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone get me out of here. <laughs> With daylight fading rapidly, we couldn't wait to get down to the lake. Just riding up in the back of the van with all the gear. Mario and Ollie are up front. Hi, mate. This place. A little bit of heaven. The anticipation of being here is killing me. We've got all the gear out, the boys have pumped the boats out, I've stripped the van, we've got everything we need, the essentials just for tonight, and we're gonna head off now. It's dark, it's late, but that's typical us in Eurobanks. Gonna get the rods out and see if we can't catch an absolute massive Austrian whacker. In true fashion, we arrived really late last night. Rods went out and we were shattered, absolutely exhausted. And I couldn't quite believe it. I said goodnight to the lads. They were gonna sit up and have a couple more cups of coffee. I hit the sack and immediately one of the rods has ripped off and it had only been out, I don't know, half hour, an hour, something like that. And Ollie caught a really, really beautiful common. Uh, Went to sleep then really, needed some sleep, absolutely shattered and I woke up just before first light this morning or just as it was getting light and, and, and caught a nice mirror myself. Not monsters in comparison to what's out here but it was a good start you know, to get bites that quickly. Uh, Mario says he's fished the lake for a number of years now. Um, unlike uh, a lot of waters where you're looking for those sort of first few hours in the morning, last few hours of, of daylight, actually now or coming up to now, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock, 
it's big fish time. So I'm really, really excited to get the rods back out there. And then this evening, we're doing something really cool. We're gonna pack all this down here, and we're gonna get on the boats, and we're gonna do an entire night from the boats. We've made up some small anchors. We're gonna go around, drift around, listen for crashing fish, drop the anchors, and then and fish directly on top of them. It's very, very deep, and as long as we're quiet, we stand a chance of getting right over the top of them and fishing them. So yeah, a really, really exciting day. I'm gonna get this rod sorted out now. The tactics are pretty similar to what I've been doing the entire trip. Big, strong, 35 pound armor link hook links, big, big size one and two twister long shanks, fished with a slip D. Um, the only real difference here is um, you're not allowed to pre-bait the lake. You're not allowed to feed the lake. The only bait that's allowed to go in the water is your actual hook bait. So I've got a 24 mil scope X grid uh, bottom bait here. And what I'm going to now do is wrap a load of paste around it. I'm going to get this one sorted out, get the rod back out there. I'm really excited because swimming in this lake are some very, very old and very, very big carp. Big long rig, big hook massive bait hopefully equals a really big special Austrian carp. Stuck it out all day. We sat in this beautiful swim but not seen any fish. I was gonna stay put in here because it did do us two bites last night. They were lovely fish. We've seen a few show this morning, but it's, it's been quiet during today and the sort of three of us fishing in here together, it is a little bit overcrowded. So gonna split up, see if we can not track some fish down as it starts to get dark tonight. And yeah, fish off the boat, pretty excited. Um, gonna find the carp, flick the rods out. And hopefully between Ollie and Mary and myself, we'll have a few fish to report in the morning. But yeah, quiet day today. Beautiful location, just want to get amongst a few more of these incredible carp. Uh, winds dropped right off and uh, yeah, settled into the evening underneath some, some trees over there. Uh, got a really nice sandy plateau down my margin and then quite a deep uh, drop off, steep drop off. Yeah, very optimistic, very excited. Yeah. Sleep on the boat all night. And, I might leave you to get your rod sorted. Yeah, good luck, mate. I shall carry on searching here. You know what you're doing, don't you? I know 40, exactly 50 what I'm yards, boom. Yeah. Good luck. You too, mate. See that, bro. See you later. nice proper night on the boat in the trees with ants and bugs falling on my head constantly god knows how many i ate through the night uh, the fishing the fishing was not immense uh, good i managed four bites landed four but all very small uh, three little mirrors and a common uh, mario also had a small common and lost a really good mirror right you know basically at the net i'm proper gutted for him uh, he's had to disappear now he's just shot across to the other side of the lake to see Ollie, to see how he's got on. Yeah, soon time to bid farewell to Austria, but another epic stop off on this mental adventure. Here he is. Morning. I've missed you, mate. I've missed you. <laughs> it's only been a few hours. <laughs> I'm true. Oh dear, isn't that sad? <laughs> so we've got eight hours in the van together. Uh, quiet one then. Oh mate. Not quiet, I mean I had a bite. Yeah, I had and they were, bites. Mate, there were fish showing this morning. What's that? Good fish. What was it? What's just here? just not worked out really. Mm. Well I say that, we've caught fish. No, it's been great. It's been I mean, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, but no big ones. No, which is what we came for, so yeah. we've got one last throw to dice, haven't we? we? Have. I'm gonna get on the phone to Mr. Mark from Carpzilla and tell him we're coming up this evening, we're coming to Germany, um, and we're gonna do a day up there, day, day and a night, see what happens. 
Come on, big un. Another quick overnight. So you got battered by ants, did you? Ants, I can mad s- shield I can see one on you. And yeah, all night, red ones. Mm. Even on a boat, what's that yeah, all about? Just all the branches in, in my hair and... Yeah. <laughs> Mate, I mean, I know you thought I was up all night with fish, but actually, um, <laughs> when I got that bite at three o'clock, my whole pillow, like there was a massive ant's nest underneath it. So I spent a fair while uh, ejecting them all. Who lives in a house like this? Only Alan Blair. I think I got a nice cover shot out of that old weight. <laughs> That's what happens when you're on a boat. You need to go to dry land if you want decent catch picks. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> boat life. Boat life. Boat hobo. Feeling a bit like that right now. I'm going to have a shower. Freshen up. Going to ride to Germany. Well, he's not a monster, but I kept him to show you. Mate, it's a car pole. That's what we came for. That's what we came for, mate. No monster, but he's a car. Let's get him back. Let's hit the road. Let's get out of here. Well, I just wanted to mark like a real sad moment in our trip. <sighs> the Haribo. Mark Vreesome, thank you. This has kept us going. The Fantasia mix. <laughs> a whole kilo of it. <sighs> oh, mate. Six and three quarter hours. Including a Burger King. A BK Whopper! <laughs> Let's do it. So you're, you're still in Carinthia and far behind time. <laughs> um, is, it, is it rude if I say I, I haven't expected something else? <laughs> uh, we've stopped to get fuel. And someone's recognised Alan. In Austria, at a petrol station. Literally can't take him anywhere. Bosh in it. Bosh! Yes, how are you doing? Well, I'm good, yeah, man. You? Well, man, how are you? Are you? <laughs> good, man. You had a hell of a ride, yeah, hadn't man. you? Wild ride. Whoa, you must be tired. Nah. No, you're yeah, never I'm tired. Like, I, know, like, <laughs> I feel good to go. To be fair, I've been moaning all day that I want to go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's another late arrival. <laughs> We left Corinthia significantly later than we had planned. The schedule said eight, it was more like three. Lots of amazing mountains, some of which were snow capped. It was a really cool drive, found some mega, mega podcasts, and yeah, we bounced our whole way here basically, even with no more of Mark Moosen's Harry Bows. <laughs> and we're in another, another piece of paradise, basically, mm-hmm. met up with the boys from Carpzilla. And uh, yeah, buzzing to spend uh, the best part of sort of 36 to 48 hours with them now in East Germany. In front of us, we've got a lovely plateau. Uh, we're going to simply wade the rods out, lower them down, a little bit of bait around, have a feel around with the prodding stick to find something of interest. But nice, simple fishing, bearing in mind it's getting on for midnight now. And then tomorrow we've got an action-packed day with Volker and, and Mark. We're going on missions. Uh, I have no idea exactly where they're taking us, but the brief was, can we go and do a bit of sight fishing and stalking, which we haven't done a great deal of up until now. So I'm buzzing to get the sawn offs out, potentially a bread bomb, and utilise the very last energy I have <laughs> trying to get amongst a few mega carp with the lads from Carp Tiller in East Germany. All right, let's get the rods out and have a beer with the lads. Let's do this. 
exactly the same as the best part of the last 10 days. We should drop off inline, cling on leader, uh, and as Skype Peaks with Culture look bait, they haven't let me down. By moonlight, we waded out and hand placed our rigs at the edge of the drop off, hoping for a German giant from this deep pit. Ollie and I dreamt of big mirrors last night, big German mirrors. So it was somewhat of a special surprise when uh, the rod that was positioned on the edge of the plateau on the Scopex Good Culture Duck Bait ripped off. Played the fish in and up popped this incredible ghostly common. Special fish. And as the boys at Carpzilla say, all half are beautiful, this one especially. We love Germany. <laughs> Mighty River Rhine, home of Carpzilla. And that's exactly where we're heading now. Mark's up front. We're going to go check out their new yard. The boys are not long moved here. We found it quite interesting this morning though. They've not moved here for business, for work, for good nightlife. Nah, they've solely moved to this part of Germany because of the fishing it has on offer. And there is some incredible fishing, isn't there? If you know where to look. This is home. This is it. Carpzilla HQ. <laughs> and that's the house. In the top, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. We have a proper garden over there. We could hang out there tonight, have oh. a barbecue. Check it out. <laughs> nice to meet you, Nice Alan. to meet you. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Carpzilla garden. Should we have a look in the house then? Yeah, welcome to our cribs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning I, I jump into the water with this for a paddle. Yeah, this is a cool office. Yeah, that's a very big lens. Weapon, out. mate. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> in mean, awe a little bit, to be fair. Like Essex or here. Essex or here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gets the big thumbs up. But now we should go fishing, guys. Yeah, let's go. Let's find some hungry hippos. What a cool place! Have you ever seen your German license? This is what you would look like if you were German. Uh -oh. But look at you. Oh, no. You're not any better. Oh yeah, I'm not looking, I must be East German. <laughs> First stop of the day, a park lake. Waited a good few days for an opportunity like this. No boats, no barrows, no van, just me, my gear, in the woods, beautiful overgrown lake. And we've got a couple of hours to basically run around as quietly and stealthily as possible and try and find some carp. Good luck, mate. It didn't take long to find some carp in a quiet corner, including a real monster of a common. Oh, it's not small, mate. He didn't spook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 
yes, man. <laughs> this is a small one. <laughs> Yes, brother. Really nice mirror. Really nice yeah. mirror. While I was stalking them with a the bread bomb, Ollie was also stalking them at half a wrap. A very lovely, plump little German carp very angry at being snatched from right out of the edge. And when you forget your refresh water bucket, what better <laughs> than some cider? Should we give you a hand? Yes. Yeah, jump in. Come on. Thank you, my friend, for the great diversion. No worries, you're right. <laughs> for his dorsal and his tail. Yeah, man. That's how we roll. Yeah, mate. <laughs> nice one. Top man, thank you. Thank you very much, man. No problem. Lovely. Pleasure. Brother, if you caught that common, <gasps> definitely lake record. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly did. 50 pounds big. 45, 50 pounds big. Massive. And the next cast, a catch of a beautiful mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bread bomb business. Immense fight. I'm so glad I switched to the three pound sawn off and took the Zig Flow off and put some proper thick bullet mono on because I needed it for this beast. Mega moment with the boys. Yeah, lovely, lovely times. Can't a clue complain about that one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Good job. So nice. Park Lake completed, we grabbed some lunch and headed to the next location. The coffee man. Yeah. The coffee, all cappuccino, so feel free. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna go fish on a little trout stream, but it's kind of brownish, coffee-ish, um, because of, we don't know, rain probably. Yesterday it looked gin clear, but yeah, it's a challenge. Everybody can do it if it's easy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what do you think? Yeah, I want to have a little go. Yeah. Shouldn't waste too much time, but I really want to see the park lakes before we go back to Definitely. Yours, no. 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Perfect. Give it a go. We give ourselves a little time. Then. Where an overflow joined the river, we found a group of carp and barbel. Three, four. four. No, it's the challenge. No, he's buzzing. No, he's buzzing. <laughs> Nice unexpected surprise. I let the bread flutter down and roll along the bottom. I caught myself a beautiful bottle. <laughs> Another set of park lakes were up next, overgrown and covered in pads. It was bread bomb territory again, and the cart were obliging. It didn't take long for Mark and I to get the sawn off spending. Mark. Fair play for getting in amongst the pads to rescue yours. <sighs> nice carp guys. Very nice. <laughs> Look what I caught! 
Germany. Yeah, absolutely brilliant to wake up this morning and catch that incredible ghosty from a really big wild lake in the forest. To then go and check out the Carpzilla headquarters, which blew me away. To then go on and catch a really nice mirror and finally end up here at these series of five very, very weedy, lily pad covered park lakes, doing a bit of stalking with the boys. Brilliant day, lads. And it ain't over yet. No! <laughs> the is, night is, is young. <laughs> That's where the US yes, lads. Lovely times, so as we good. say. Yay! Enjoy Germany. <laughs> Well, this is very civilised. This is lovely. It's a really surreal place to be. Um, and yeah, we're going to get the rods out. Myself, Ollie, Mark, and then the boys from Carpzilla are going to chill in the garden, have a barbecue. They haven't lived here long, so they haven't done a huge amount of fishing on this particular stretch of, I suppose, an offshoot of the River Rhine. But since they have been fishing, they've already caught some remarkable fish. Um, grass carp to ridiculous weights, 29, 27, 29, 29 kilos. kilos. Uh, mirrors to 17 last week. It's going to be our last night in Germany. We're definitely getting closer and closer to home now uh, in the morning. Really would like to get up early because our final destination is, is Holland. Uh, looking forward to it. Let's okay. get the rods out. Let's get the rods out, look. So you've got this man-made stone barrier here, probably to prevent erosion of the bank. And at the bottom of that, you've got a natural motorway for the fish. There's some weed along here that's growing in and amongst the stones. It's quite clear the other side of it. And this is gonna be my big grassy spot. Yeah, I'd love to catch a big grassy. A lot of people don't like them, but I love the fight. And you know, when they get big, they seriously are impressive. Further out here, towards the middle of the river, I'm gonna fish with a scopex squid for a big carp. And there's some massive carp in this stretch and out in the middle I just want somewhere nice and clean that hopefully a big carp will be patrolling up the middle. Beautiful. Well done, mate. There's the van loaded. And we're leaving Germany. Yeah, that's it, man. It's time to say goodbye. I've really enjoyed it in Germany. But now we've got to get on the road, head up to uh, Amsterdam to go and meet up with Felix. Now, thank you, lads. Mean it. Um, you You're were very welcome. You were the perfect Always. hosts. Absolute perfect hosts. Thanks, Volker. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Have a safe journey, bro. Thanks, bro. Safe travel. And we'll see you nice. soon. Uh, it's nice and safe Definitely. wide, yeah. Uh, big ups, Mark. How's that Love up? ya. See you soon. See you soon. Thanks for everything. Um, safe trip home. See you Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Sunday? <laughs>
Actually, I'll see you next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Czech Republic. Yeah. Good, but I'll see you like in two days or so. Yeah. Right, boys, big cool. ups. Thank you again. Safe travels. Safe, safe. Safe travels. <laughs> So we left Germany behind and headed to Amsterdam to meet our good friend Felix. Big up. Big up. We will see some fish, for sure. Sick. Sick. Confidence, that's the word. Okay. okay yeah, man. man, buzzing. Yeah. Energy. Energy. Come on. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> oh, she's hot. It's scorching in Holland. This is our first location. Me and Felix just come for a walk over here oh, and uh, called yeah. it because of the windmill. Blow me down, we've only found about probably 10 to a dozen carp, not monsters. We're gonna give it half an hour here, then head into Amsterdam itself, because Ollie and I are still, still pining for a true Dutch Amsterdam canal carp. The heat made the fishing tough, but I persevered and managed to tempt a lovely grass carp. A really lovely grass eat in difficult conditions. It's our first stop off in Holland, and we're gonna go and check out a nice piece of canal now covered in lily pads. Give it an hour there, and then head right into the middle of the city to try for a bigger one. Yeah, result in such hot conditions. Before we headed into Amsterdam, we stopped off at Felix's garden on the outskirts of the city. We'd fished here briefly before back in February and bagged a couple from the little lily covered marina. We were hoping for another quick bite and we weren't disappointed. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Proper Dutch car. Yeah. Yes, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> Bread bomb has been the weapon of choice today, stand you proud. And the line's held up, even in that savage conditions. Yeah, another lovely common. Ha, look at him. Proper sausage. Lovely little carp. Excellent. And the night is still young. Eat the moon, Alan. Eat the moon. <laughs> you nailed it first time. Did then. I? Yeah, well, you did I really? You nailed the moon, yeah. When Alan and I fished here before, we had three bites quite quickly on citrus pop up, so uh, I thought it'd be rude not to chuck out citrus pop up. A wild egg. A proper wild egg. Yeah. Typical Dutch wildy common. Torpedo. We headed into the city to check out some spots, but they were super busy and sleep was going to be tough. We were both exhausted and needed some shut eye, so Felix found us a quieter spot. The 
night passed uneventfully and it was time to bid Felix farewell and head home. Soon. Ollie. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Well, not quite. There's always time for one more cart. So with just an hour to spare, we decided to stop off in Belgium. We were going home, but man, we couldn't fish. <laughs> we couldn't go home without seeing you. How are you, man? Yeah, man. Good, Good to see you, bro. You've caught a what? Caught a rod. <laughs> Some noddy. Let the fish put it in. You look rather wet too, are we? Is that just sweat? <laughs> or have you been in the drink? I needed a shower. <laughs> you needed a shower. Great excuse, brother. Well, well done for recovering it. Got my rod back. I don't know if the fish is still attached, but. You get a thousand man points if it is. Some fish you're just destined to catch. It's a good one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Special carp. <laughs> Mate, it happened in slow motion. Mate, you should watch the Did clip. you see it then? Watch the clip. Did you see it? Watch it. Do you know, bro? Are they having it? Uh, I'm sorry, I think I scared them all away, mate, by... Yeah, I got one. <laughs> like this. What, feeding just down here? Mm -hmm. Oh, you got one in the net? So ah, nice. well done, <laughs> brother. Big up Shiro Banks. What a great way to end in Belgium. That's 10 countries now. Well, a lot of countries, but 10 countries we caught carp from. Thanks, Gio. Really great Always. to see you, bruv. Albeit a very quick in and out pit stop carp. Bread bomb business. <laughs> Bit of noodling for me. And that brought us to the close of yet another incredible Eurobanks adventure. Heading back to the UK with memories that will stay with us forever but not before finishing the trip off with a mega party with friends and family.
and so after an amazing 13 days on the road covering 3,700 miles and catching cut from 10 different countries we arrive back home roll on Eurobank 6